It's what every government fears, the hostile takeover of key infrastructure like transport systems or power stations. This is a simulation run by an agency working for the UK government. The attack bypasses the control room that thinks everything's okay. Its creators aren't the only ones who think this is an incident waiting to happen. As we've seen more and more infrastructure being connected to networks, the Armageddon moment certainly could look like water systems being turned off or electricity plants across a nation being shut down. I'd be probably expecting some country will, will face an attack in the next three years that will be successful in shutting down the power grid. That is highly likely. Europe's biggest digital security conference held earlier this year has a worrying message. Inside, the suits are talking to the suits about how they can protect their company's secrets, the jobs they create, and our private information. Jaime Blasco is one of the good guys, an online detective. His security company, Alien Vault, unlike most others, is interested in and actively tracks down hackers. Like many others, he's confident the Chinese state is supporting more cyber espionage than any other nation. But how does he know? Okay, so some examples are, for instance, uh, the time zone that they use. On the other hand, we have found a lot of references to Mandarin and stuff in, in the malwares. To not look very obvious, what they do is they use uh, proxies to proxy the connections to, to, to the real attackers. And we were able to trace those connections to the last hop. And every time it, the, the last hop was in uh, mainland China. Security experts in the U.S. tracked down attacks against 140 American companies to this single building in Shanghai. And that suggests it's a well-organized, well-funded effort. Attacks take place over months, sometimes years. And whilst some attacks from China are very sophisticated, most gain access to sensitive data by using a well-practiced con. Dominic's story from security firm Sourcefire showed me how easy it can be with an openly available, off-the-shelf piece of software. Look at this, uh, this email from Mary Jane's boss, Dominic Story. And he's just said to her, Hey Mary, I just saw this link on bbc.co.uk's click site. It's really interesting on translation. So Mary would say, Oh, I think I clicked that link. And as she clicks it, she's going to actually be taken to an attacker site, but she'll never know. The software has allowed Dominic to duplicate the BBC Click site, which asks Mary to run an application. And the hackers need just one person inside an institution to accept this to get inside the company. I can now interact with her machine. So, for example, what is Mary Jane looking at? So I type screenshot and it will go and grasp exactly what's on Mary's machine. So. I have reached into Mary's machine across the internet and grasped exactly what she's looking at. Take a shell onto Mary's machine and now I have full access to everything on Mary's hard drive. Once inside, the hackers can then move quickly to other machines, sometimes finding exactly what they want within a few days. Thankfully, the same idea can be used to fool the intruders by setting up a fake system to allow Hamy to study them. It's true that the, most of them realize uh, it's a trap and then they disappear, but I mean, it doesn't matter because you are able to analyze uh, uh, the techniques that they, that they are using. Cassidian is a global defense and security provider currently protecting government departments, including the military, in France, Germany and the UK. This is a mock-up of its operations room. The British military didn't want us filming the real thing. Analysts scan the chatter between computers looking for anything suspicious. Repeat attempts at passwords or a connection to a new computer with unusual volumes of traffic might spark a referral up the chain of command. This is active monitoring by humans for highly sensitive potential UK targets. Andrew Beckett is the boss. He's worked at GCHQ and protected the royal family in the past. I asked him, 
who was on the attack. You can get techniques or attack techniques and attack tools very cheaply from the internet. You can buy expertise that wasn't available for traditional methods of espionage. Um, and so we are seeing even quite small countries actively engaged in state-sponsored cyber attacks for the purposes of uh, supporting state industry through the theft of intellectual property um, or disruption. From the security experts we've spoken to, it seems different styles of attacks are emanating from different countries. Whilst China appears to be the most active, it's Russia and Eastern Europe where many of the most sophisticated attacks are originating, needing vast resources and often lasting several months. And then there's the United States. The revelations from former CIA spook Edward Snowden point to widespread surveillance of telecoms and the internet both inside and outside the United States. And what of Western Europe? Both Germany and France are known to have an offensive online capability. Could those countries be considered hostile to the US or the UK? Yes, or, or on the face of it. Um, uh, ob obviously, final decisions on those are, t are taken at, uh, at higher levels by, uh, by the relevant national authorities. But do you think the Allies are behind it, or do you think they're just behind it? We're not naive enough to think that, uh, that, um, that, that, that countries aren't involved in industrial espionage in, in support of their industry. Um, I, I, uh, I'm not surprised I would fully expect that to be the case. It's also widely accepted that the UK now has an offensive capability, though its targets are less clear. With experts now saying that security breaches are inevitable, the question is how to minimise the danger and the damage. Visibility is the problem, is, is making this problem easier to spot, because today it's in totally invisible and uh, we're all suffering as a result of it. In the last week, the UK government has announced targeted support for 160 companies seen as crucial to the economy and infrastructure. All firms are being encouraged to admit when they've been attacked. The EU is considering making this a legal requirement. And every firm should have a post-incident response that may include being able to section off or shut down certain systems, as well as how to deal with customers. High-tech monitoring of systems may not be the whole answer, though. When it comes to protecting the infrastructure that we rely on, power stations, oil refineries, water purification stations, well, those plants often have technology which might be 20 or 30 years old. Turning them off may not be the safest answer to protecting against an attack. So to solve that problem, researchers have had to get their hands dirty. Testing on independent hardware controllers like this one has become a priority. The fear is that if they were hacked, power stations could be sabotaged without any warning. If somebody gets into it and reprograms it, they've got potential, potentially millions of machines just waiting to go um, and go after whatever the latest target happens to be. And that could be uh, the UK. If there's a lesson to be learned from all of this, it's that serious money is now flooding in to malicious attacks over the net and that no one can be truly safe. At the moment, it appears that countries attacking the most have the upper hand. And any institution that thinks its online defences can't be breached may struggle to respond when they realise there's a foreign attacker inside their system.